As writers, we have to acknowledge that we can't do everything. At least, not well. So, as I start getting back into writing full time, because my job doesn't exist anymore, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to take a look at what I do well and what I don't do well. Today, I'm gonna to talk about my top five writing weaknesses. Number five, white room syndrome. For those who don't know the term, white room syndrome means that when I'm describing a scene, describing what's going on, you don't understand where I'm talking about. You don't know where things are. You don't know what the room looks like. You don't know what's going on. White room syndrome means you don't know what's important. You don't know what you should be looking at because I haven't given you anything. Maybe I've just told you that we're in a jail. Cool. What's the jail like? Maybe I've told you we're in a classroom. How big is it? Is it full of people? Is it for little children or for adults? Are there windows? Is it in a prison? Number four, confusing action sequences. This one ties in a lot to number five, but basically I've done a bad job of telling you what's important. Maybe you don't understand the geography of the setting, or maybe you don't understand the motivations of every character. For example, maybe what the main character wants is obvious. What about the villain? What about the side characters? It doesn't matter if these things are reveals, we have to have some understanding as an audience when the scene begins or we're gonna be confused rather than intrigued. And yeah, it ties back into the white room syndrome because if you don't understand the layout of the action sequence, you're gonna be confused rather than entertained or engrossed. Number three, logic leaps for big reveals. When I've got a big twist at the end of a book, Sometimes I have not properly set up how the main characters have figured it out, other than to say, well, this is the point in the story where they figure it out. And that's not very satisfying, because what will happen is the main characters will make some sort of major logic leap. And this leap, well, it hasn't been explained to the audience. It hasn't been earned by the writer, which is me. So but instead of being a, oh my gosh, all the pieces fall into place moment. Instead, it's unsatisfying, it's frustrating, and it's not motivated by the story, let alone by what the characters have actually figured out for themselves, or what the audience could have figured out. If you're gonna have a moment, a reveal, a twist that your characters figure out at the 11th hour, you've got to have actually sold it to your audience. Half your audience should figure it out before you get to the ending. And the other half should feel, you know, like it, like it was obvious and well hidden, if that makes sense. I'm not very good at that. Number two, staying focused on one project. I have a lot of ideas. Some of them might even maybe be good ones, but I have a focus problem. I have a lot of things going on in my head, and well, I think we're all familiar with that moment that you feel the project you're working on getting a little difficult, and one of the other ideas in your head pops up and says, hey, focus on me instead. It's tempting, and it's intriguing, it happens to me a lot. Because I have such a poor focusing ability, I've got a couple of novels that are partly complete and no novels that are complete. And my number one writing weakness is not finding, not making, the time to write because that's my biggest problem. I don't give it the time and the attention that I know it deserves. You could probably unpack that in a lot of ways. Psychologically, I think a lot of writers deal with that, and I think that that is a way that we tend to self-sabotage ourselves. I've done videos about it before. You can check out the video I did about 
writing resistance and my continuing difficulties fighting it. But now that I no longer have a job, I think I can hopefully get rid of that writing weakness. Because you gotta make the time. Shoot. Because if something is important to you, if something matters, if there's something that you want to have more of in your life, then you need to make sure that you let it know how important it is to you and make the time for it. That's all I've got today. Uh, if you enjoy the video, uh, let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like it, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want to make sure you know when they come out, hit the bell. Next week, I'm going to talk about my five writing strengths, because this was not just an exercise in self-hate. This is part one of two, and that's why it was important to do this video first. But we'll be back next week with the second part, my top five writing strengths. Thanks so much for watching. I love you, Victoria.